بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد من نزغ الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلال في النار Uh, Alhamdulillah, today, in the morning, also yesterday, mashallah, strong rain came to Kuwait and also other countries. And as you know, <coughs> the Sunnah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is no rain, the Sunnah to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rain, which is called al istisqa, which is called al istisqa. And if you remember last, last week in Kuwait, some masajid prayed the istisqa. <coughs> and there is something called al istisha. Al istisha. What is the meaning of al istisha? It is opposite of the istisqa. The Prophet وسلم, was giving Jum'ah khutbah, then a man came to him. A man entered the masjid. Then the Prophet sallallahu the, the man said, Oh Rasulullah, halakat al-amwal. Yani he started to complain that we lost our money and the cattle. Why? No rain. It is dry. Fad'u Allah lana. Oh Rasulullah, ask Allah to give, uh, to give us the rain. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa raised his hand in Jum'ah khutbah. And this is the place where we can raise our hands in Jum'ah Khutbah. Not every Jum'ah Khutbah. If the Imam is asking for rain, istisqa, then it is allowed to raise the hand. The Prophet ﷺ raised his hands and he said, Allahumma sqina, Allahumma sqina, Allahumma sqina, Allahumma aghithna. It is allowed. Not every Jum'ah. When the Imam makes dua for rain. So this is istisqa. So subhanallah, before the Prophet ﷺ finished the khutbah, the clouds came to Medina, the rain started. Subhanallah. And the rain did not stop for the whole week. Then the next week, the man came, the same or another man, or oh, Rasulullah, we have problems because of the continuous rain. Subhanallah. Tayyip. Okay. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not uh, he sallallahu alaihi did not ask Allah to stop the rain. Okay, and be careful. The da'iyah and the scholar should not uh, should not answer the people what they want. Okay, you should give them what they need. Always, I'm repeating this word as a da'i. As a scholar, as a father, don't give your children, don't give the people what they want. Give them what they need. You need to guide them. Sometimes they ask you what is harmful for them. So you need to guide them. So as if this man asked the Prophet ﷺ, ask Allah to stop the rain. The Prophet ﷺ did not ask Allah to stop the rain. But he said, وسلم, Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna. Oh Allah, make the rain around the Medina, not inside Medina. Okay, and this is called al istisha. Istisha, opposite of istisqa. Istisqa, asking the rain, clouds and rain. Istisha from the word sahu. Sahu means when the sky is clean and clear, no clouds. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, not common sunnah. Or I mean, uh, many Muslims don't know this Sunnah. 
What we know, if there is rain, we say, Allahumma sayyiban nafi'an. But many Muslims don't know that if the rain is strong and we start to suffer because of the rain, the strong rain, we should ask Allah, Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna. Oh Allah, keep the rain away from us in the city and keep the rain in the desert. Allah asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna. Allahumma ala al-dirab wa al-akam wa al-awdiya. Oh Allah, keep the rain away from the city and send the rain to the valleys, the desert, and these places. Walaykum as You got the point? So this is sunnah. Okay? Don't say, oh Allah, stop the rain. Because if you stop the rain, we will lose. Yes, the, the rain may, made problem in some streets, in some houses. Okay? But imagine if the rain in the desert, it will be very useful. Right? So, this is a very important point, that the scholars should not answer people what they want always. Because sometimes they don't realize the benefit. Or they don't have the balance. And so the scholars, the scholars should guide people. The scholar should guide people. The da'i should guide people. You should be wise. A lot of knowledge to guide the people. Is the Instagram clear or there is a problem in Instagram? Anyone can check, please? طيب. We are in the chapter. Uh, chapter, okay, uh, Page 128. صح? Hadith 229. We are talking about the joke of uh, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. How he, he, how he was joking صلى الله عليه وسلم. The last hadith was, uh, I mean, we mentioned last week, from Abu Huraira, رضي الله تعالى عن, who said, the Sahaba asked Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, O oh, Rasulullah, you joke with us. You joke with us. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yes, I don't say, but the truth. I'm a human being. Okay? I joke. But always I tell the truth. Always. Okay? So be careful. Don't lie. Lying is not the way of the believer. Okay? And this is the way of the munafiq, the hypocrites. Shukran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that Ayat Munafiq Thalath The signs of the hypocrite Three And one of them وَإِذَا حَدَّثَ كَذَبْ When he speaks, he tells lies So the believer doesn't lie The believer doesn't lie طيب. Let's go to the next hadith Let's go to the next hadith Hadith 230 And page 129 Okay, anything? From Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, who said, a man requested from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him a means of uh, convenience and a way of transport. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, a child of a camel shall be given to you. A child of a camel. طيب. Then the man said, what shall I do with the child of a camel, O oh, Rasulullah? A child of a camel. Yani, it cannot carry me, it cannot carry my things. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every camel is a child of a camel. Yani, when I told you a child of a camel, it doesn't mean that it is a small, it is baby. لا. Yani, also you, even if your age is 40, 50, you are a child of your mother and father, صح? Okay, so even if you are old man, but still you are a child of your parents. So the Prophet ﷺ told him the truth. He did not lie, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joking. Okay, not the way of now many people. When they think to joke, they lie. Okay, yeah, they take, maybe your friend, uh, takes your keys you ask him where is, where, where is my key I don't know this is kadib. this is a lie no let's make a joke this is haram this is haram 
طيب the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم joke he joked with his companions but he did not use the lie he did not use any lie صلى الله عليه وسلم and if you notice سبحانه very nice his jokes صلى الله عليه وسلم okay a child of a camel يعني والله very nice صلى الله عليه وسلم طيب next حديث حديث 231 from Anas ibn Malik again رضي الله تعالى عنه there was a resident of the uh, wilderness whose name Zahir was Zahir رضي الله تعالى عنه طيب whenever he visited Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم he brought with him some gifts from the Al-Badu from the wilderness and presented it to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he intended to leave Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam presented him with provisions of the city. So this was the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yani, if you give him a gift, he will try his best to reply. You give him food, he will give food. You give him perfume, he will give perfume. Yani, he will try his best, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to give you something. Why the scholars say the Prophet doesn't want to, yani, uh, to give a chance for anyone to mention that well, I, that day I gave you something. Yani, imagine I gave you, for example, food. I prepared the lunch for you, then I sent the lunch to your house. Okay, maybe after one month, two months, two years, three years, Okay, you mentioned, do you remember that day I prepared the food for you? Maybe, as a human being. Okay, but imagine if immediately, okay, you, I sent you food, lunch, and for dinner I sent also food. So will you think that to mention that I sent the, you sent the lunch to me? You will not mention, why? Because immediately at night or the next day I, I replied your, your gift. خلاص. You don't give the chance for anyone to mention, Wallahi, I helped you. I gave you. This is the personality of the Muslim. Because if you ask people, خلاص. People like, I'll attack you. You give the, the chance for people to attack you. And if you notice all the prophets, alayhim salatu wassalam, they say, Ya qawmi la asalukum alayhi mala. Ya qawmi la asalukum alayhi ajra. Oh my people, I don't ask you any any good, any money, any wealth. I'm giving you da'wah free. Free da'wah. Where is the free da'wah today? Do we have free da'wah? We have, alhamdulillah. Okay, but also the charging da'wah. It is, huh? Also there is a, yani, a difference between a sheikh or, I will not say a sheikh, a da'i, okay? You ask him, please, we need a lecture. We need to explain how to make the salah, how to make the wudu. Okay? If the sheikh say, how much you give, I will not give you the lecture until you give me money. Khalas, put him in the blacklist, this sheikh. Okay? If he is negotiating, well, how much you pay, and if you don't pay, I will not give lecture. Huh? Even sometimes you don't have the chance to, to speak to this sheikh. Speak to his, uh, uh, his office. Huh? We don't like this, this, yani this way, okay? But for example, yani, if it is common and you know, and you, yani especially now, okay, not especially now, even this is old. Do you know that some scholars of hadith, they will not give you the hadith until you pay them? Scholars of hadith, this is old. Okay, yani some scholars, do uh, uh, used to do this and other scholars don't don't accept no we teach free we don't take any dirham other scholars no you have to pay i prepare i memorize i traveled many places i wrote i bought the ink i do this and that you have you have to help me if you don't help me my knowledge will stop okay if you don't pay me i will not give lectures because i i should go and earn some money for my family Okay, but the, the da'iyah should not be greedy. Okay, yani I heard uh, in one place they, they, they told me in America, 
for Jum'a khutbah, one thousand dollar. Okay, I don't. Is it true? More. More. Bad. For Jum'a khutbah, one thousand dollar. يعني كم how كم كم دينار يعني three hundred about about four hundred dinar. Oh, Allah, this is minister. <laughs> huh? This is too much. Really. This is too much. Especially if you, if there is a need. Yani you go to a small village and or small masjid, a small center, okay, or new center, or in a place there is no any Islamic center and they don't have money, okay, and you ask them something high, no, you should give zakah. Yani it's called to say you have to give zakah. Charity. But what kind of charity? The charity of your knowledge. Your knowledge. You have a lot of knowledge. You have to give charity. You have to give something free. Tayyip? <coughs> okay. So the, so the point is the Prophet ﷺ, uh, accepted the gift from Zahir and also he gifted him at the, at the end of his visit. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyip. When he intended to leave Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam presented him with provisions of city. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Zahir is our Badiyatuna wa nahnu hadiru. Zahir is our wilderness and we are his city. Okay? He brings the things from the desert, from the uh, wilderness, and we give him the things from city. Because they are not the same. Sah? Are they the same? No, they're not the same. From the desert, maybe you bring the camels, the milk of the camels, you bring things from the desert. And there are things, certain things in the city, not prepared, yeah, not uh, provided. So Zahir, the Prophet ﷺ said, Zahir is our wilderness and we are his city. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was attached to him. Zahir was not very handsome. وَكَانَ دَمِيمًا يعني, we, uh, Maybe we can say, uh, uh, not nice face, not, or ugly face, something like this. Subhanallah. طيب. But of course, this is not important in Islam. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in Hadith Sahih Muslim, Allah doesn't look at your forms or your wealth. إن الله لا ينظر إلى صوركم وأموالكم Allah doesn't look at your forms, your face, your body, or your wealth. Okay? Rather, He looks at your deeds and your hearts. There is narration, okay? Uh, maybe some people you misuse this narration. Allah doesn't look at your forms or your wealth. Rather, He looks at your hearts. There is, there is narration. Okay? And they, some people misuse this narration. How? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith, Allah will look at our hearts. خلاص. What about your deeds? No, the Prophet ﷺ said our hearts. Okay? But there is another narration also in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, He looks, Allah, at your deeds and your hearts. So what is the important? Your deeds and your hearts. Tayyip? So this is very important. So he was not a handsome, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when they came to him, once while he was standing in the place and selling. Okay, he was selling some business. Tayyib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa caught him between the arms from the back. The Prophet came, then he, like, hugged, he hugged him from the back. He caught him from the back. Then Zahir said, release me. He, didn't, he did not recognize that he is Rasulullah. So I him. He said, release me. Who are you? Okay. Then he, he checked that. He is the Prophet so I him. Then Zahir said, uh, Zahir radiallahu ta'ala straightened his back. He tried to, to become, to touch him more with the Prophet so I him. To be closer to the Prophet so I him more. Okay, why? This is Barakah. The Prophet so I him is coming, uh, hugging you for, or caughting you, catch, catching you from the back. So he was trying to uh, يعني, stick to him more. Salah radiallahu ta'ala an. Tayyip. Then, subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
said, uh, who will purchase this slave? Who will sell, buy this slave? طيب. Then Zahir said, oh Rasulullah, uh, you'll, you'll sell a, defect, a defective thing. And I mean, have ugly face, who will buy me? Okay, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَلَكِنَّكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ غَال No, you are not defective in the sight of Allah, but much more valuable. Subhanallah. Who is Zahir among the people? He's nothing. He's Bedouin from the desert. He came from the desert. His face not handsome, doesn't have money. Okay, but the Prophet ﷺ said, no, in the sight of Allah, you are valuable. Okay, now what is the relation between this hadith and the chapter? Okay, uh, number one, the Prophet ﷺ was joking, من يشتري هذا العبد Who likes to buy this slave? Okay, Zahir was a slave or was a free man? Slave. No, he was a free man. A slave of Allah. Yes. He was slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us, even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is a slave of Allah. Okay? So this was not, this was not a lie from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Zahir is a free man. Because you know, the term slave, abd, it can be a general term. I am abd, I am a slave, you are a slave. All of you slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second meaning, slave, it means that you are owned by somebody. Okay, the, sla uh, the slavery. So the Prophet ﷺ, no doubt, he means that he is a slave of Allah. But it is the same word, the same letters. Okay, this, so this is one point that he was joking. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam with Zahir uh, radiallahu ta'ala an. <laughs> Uh, so in this hadith there are many uh, points from this hadith the scholars mentioned that uh, yani some of them it is allowed to go to the market yani to, go, uh, to go to the souk a souk for shopping selling, buying, this is allowed in Islam this is allowed why, why we are saying this, or why the scholars mention this point? Because there is hadith the Prophet mentions, uh, <coughs> The most beloved places to Allah, Masajid. And the worst, okay, the most hatred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Aswaq, the markets. Okay, can we understand from this hadith it is haram? No, it is not haram. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ went to the souq. He went to buy the things or to sell وسلم, The companions were buying and selling. So, shops not haram. I mean to go to the shops, to go to the malls, not haram. But now if you notice, what is the problem? Okay, the problem now, maybe some people go to the shops and they go to the malls and they sit there, they stay there more than the house. From Al Asr until midnight. They go around, okay, then they stay for coffee, tea, dinner, chatting. The gays, huh? Guzun. We say in Kuwait, Guzun. Yes. Okay. In Kuwait, huh? I'm feasting. I? I feasting. I feasting? Yes. In Kuwait, Okay. They sit on tables and they look, huh, look this girl and this, this man. What he is wearing and what he is doing. Subhanallah. Ghiba, backbiting. Taim? Of course, this is not the way of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are preparing, Subhanallah. They are preparing the moors. Why? To attract people. Ta'al, come. Don't leave. Everything is available. Ta'al. Food, coffee, pharmacy, uh, shopping, everything. Also, we have musalla. But maybe the smallest place is Musalla. <laughs> Longi? Yalla, good. Tayyib? <laughs> Subhanallah. Um, and also, Wallahi, um, يعني, you can see now some malls, huge. And where is the Musalla? It is in the corner. Or it is in the upstairs. It is way difficult, Wallahi, to find. And if you go, 
the, the people in the mall, thousands of people. And the musalla, I mean the prayer room is enough only for 20. Subhanallah. Huh? Allah understand. Also, uh, they say this is allowed to come to your friend and you catch him from, or you hold him from the back. Of course, you, and you don't uh, fight him from the back. Uh, you hold him in a uh, soft way. Huh? Not like the Shisamun had al judo. Put him on the ground and you, you break his back. Or so. Also, uh, it is allowed that you raise your voice if you are if you are selling something. Okay? 5 KD, 5 KD, how much? Who will give more? 10 KD. It is allowed to, to raise your voice. Tayyip. Also, it is allowed to praise your friend. Praising your friend. This is allowed. It is not haram. Yes, there is hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said, Uhtu fi wujuh al-maddahin al-turab. The Prophet وسلم, said, Uhtu, yani, take the sand and throw the sand on the face of al-maddahin. What does it mean, maddahin? Those who praise a lot. So if you praise one time, two times, okay, you praise something, yani, moderate. Okay, not praising 24 hours. And don't exaggerate in your praising. This is not allowed or this is not recommended. طيب. So, uh, يعني how, يعني for example, Wallahi, this friend, he's very good friend. He's working da'wah 24 hours. When he gives a speech, everyone will, everyone cries and everyone converses. Uh, he, they, many people accepted Islam. Okay, and especially praising him in front of him. Okay, your friend with you and you start to praise him. Wallahi, he did this, that, this, that, this, that, that. No, this is not good. This is not good, okay? And sometimes, you know, when you, uh, uh, when you visit uh, some places, uh, they, uh, يعني, before the lecture, I mean when you visit a place to give a lecture, before you give the lecture, okay, they will mention, Wallahi, this sheikh graduated from this place and he did this. And maybe sometimes they mention the number of children bad, okay? Uh, no, this is not a good way. This is not a good way. They say, but people like to know who are you. Okay, let them go and read. They can read. Who is this person? Tayyip? Okay, also, why they are here? They are here to listen to the sheikh. So no need to mention who is this sheikh. Tayyip? Uh, and there is hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw a man with his friend. And he was praising him. Mission his advantages. This and this, you are this and this. Then the Prophet said, sahibik. You are cutting the neck of your friend, of your brother. You are killing your brother. Why? The scholars said, this is very important. The, the scholars say, because subhanAllah, usually as a human being, if people are praising me, you, okay, a good da'iyah, he is uh, giving good lectures, very strong proofs from the Quran, authentic sunnah, from scholars, quoting from the books. Tayyip. And in front of him, what will happen? You will help him to be an arrogant scholar. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, You are, you are killing your friend. You are cutting his neck by praising him. Tayyip. So, Generally, if you like to praise, no problem. But exaggerating your praising, okay, over praising, this is not allowed. And this is dangerous. This is dangerous. So the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahabi, he praised him. He said, no, you are valuable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How this one? And also there are many hadith the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that uh, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, he praised them. But the Prophet ﷺ did not praise them, for example, for half an hour and in front of them, no. Tayyip. Uh, also, it is allowed to accept the gift. It is allowed to accept the gift. And also, uh, it is sunnah that you 
also reply the gift. I mean, not the same gift. Yeah, and you give something uh, exchanging. What about birthday gift? Sorry? Birthday. No, but birthday is not part of Islam. Birthday was not part of Islam. Birthday did not come from Muslims. Okay? It is not from Islam. Okay? This is uh, the way of non-Muslims. And Muslims, many Muslims doing this now. Okay? And also we like to, uh, to, help, uh, to make our children happy. Okay? They are doing also, yeah, I need the problem also if it is in the school. Okay? Yani, today, wallah, the, my friend brought a nice cake. And next week, another friend. After one month, the third. And today, maybe two. So, subhanAllah, every week, the child comes home crying. My, all my friends celebrating their birthday. Why I'm not, you, why you are not celebrating? You don't, you hate me, you don't love me, and this, this, this. Khalas, khalas, okay, khalas. Tomorrow we'll make a cake for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay? Always when my friends tell me about something haram, okay, I tell them, okay, if your son tell you, tells you, I want to smoke cigarettes, will you accept this? Of course you will not accept. Okay, the same thing. Or maybe sometimes worse. The music, the birthday, and these things. The haram is haram. Shuf, it is very important. I mean, the scholars mention, I mean, the psychologist who talk about raising children. Okay? They mention that you, you should have uh, fixed, fixed rules. Don't change. Don't deal with your children. They look, our children, very smart. Don't deal with them with two faces. Today haram and tomorrow halal. Tomorrow haram, after tomorrow halal. خلاص, the haram is haram. Halal is halal. Wajib is wajib. خلاص. They don't change. Or in Kuwait, you do something. When you travel, you do something different. No. They will respect you. They will respect you if you follow the same rule. You don't change. Yes, it will be difficult. Not easy. But with time, you will see the fruit. Inshallah, in the future. Tayyip. Next hadith. Uh, hadith 232, page 130. From Hassan Basri, Rahimullah, who says that an old woman, of course, Hassan Basri is one of the tabi'in, not companions. He's one of the famous scholars of tabi'in. And he cannot narrate hadith from the Prophet because he did not meet the Prophet But because of other narrations, Shaykh al Ba'an mentioned this is an acceptable narration. Rahimullah. An old woman came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and made a request. Oh Rasulullah, make a supplication to Allah that he may grant me entrance to, into the paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa oh mother, an old woman cannot enter the paradise. Shock. An old woman cannot enter paradise. Tayyib. Then that woman began crying because what other option she, she, she has? Of course she will cry. She began to cry and she left the place. Rasulullah sallam, said, say to that woman that one will not enter in a state of, an, uh, of old age, but Allah will make all the women of the paradise uh, virgins. Because you are an old woman, you will not enter in this state. You will be young. Why? The scholar said to enjoy the life in paradise. Because everything in paradise is perfect. Not in dunya. Because in dunya everything is not perfect. Not perfect. Except the Quran. Kalamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna ansha'nahunna insha'a fajalnahunna bukara عُرُوبًا أَتْرَابًا لِأَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ طيب Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala We have created them إِنَّا أَنْشَانُونَ فَجَعَلْنَاهُنَّ 
أبكارا فجعلناهن أبكارا الله made the women in Jannah أبكارا all of them virgins سبحان الله فجعلنا أبكارا عربا أترابا عربا what is the meaning for عربا okay loving their husbands only okay المتحببة إلى زوجها العروب عروب maybe some maybe this it is common I mean, uh, or people, people in Kuwait know this name. Do you have this name in India or Pakistan? Harub. Harub. Not common, huh? Okay. It, it is known, a known name here, Harub. Harub is a singular of Urub. Okay. Al Harub is the woman who loves. And also, she's, she's trying her best to become closer to the husband, to make the things that he likes. I mean, uh, he likes the husband. Uruban atraba. So all the women in the, in the paradise, they love the, the husband. You will not find a, a woman fighting with the husband in the paradise. This is only in dunya. In paradise, everything is perfect. Okay, no headache in dunya. Uh, sorry, in the akhirah. Also, also, if you, inshallah, yani, if you can, if you know how to deal with your wife, inshallah, you'll not get a headache in dunya. عروباً أتراباً What does it mean أتراباً? The same age The same age You will not find والله 40, 20, 32, 50 Not all of them the same The best age طيب عروباً أتراباً لأصحاب اليمين Okay This is in سورة الواقعة In سورة الواقعة So Here the, the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made a joke with this lady but even he did not lie again he did not lie why because she is an old lady and he said you are an old lady and old lady will not enter the paradise okay so yani subhanallah we should follow the same way now the new chapter interesting chapter chapter 37 chapter on the description of the sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his in, in poetry from Aisha huh, any problem any doubt anything uh, the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala who said someone inquired from her did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite shir poetry she replied he sometimes did, and as an example, recited the poetry of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. He sometimes recited this. Uh, okay, sometimes that person brings news to you whom you have not compensated. This is an important chapter, okay? Uh, why? Because sometimes maybe people who attack Islam, I mean the non-Muslims who try, who try to find something against Islam, they, you need to know this chapter very well. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرِ We did not teach him poetry. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي And it is not for him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is not his behavior to say the the, the, the poems Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ma allamna wa shi'r wa ma yinbaghi lah Tayyip And here We will we'll find some hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam something Okay And like this Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kathiran Okay Ma yathkur Abdullah Abdullah ibn, ibn Rawaha Tayyip She said He sometimes did And as an example recited the poetry of Abdullah bin Rawaha. Abdullah bin Rawaha, one of the great companions, radiallahu ta'ala, he was from Al Khazraj, I mean from the Ansar, radiallahu ta'ala, and he was one of the, the, the Ansar who met the Prophet in Mecca. As you know, when the Prophet وسلم, uh, uh, was in Mecca he met some Ansar you know they visit Mecca for Hajj, Umrah so at the beginning they, a small group visited him in Mecca and 
He had a meeting with them. And again, a larger group met him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one of them was Abdullah ibn Rawaha, radiyallahu ta'ala an. He attended Badr. And this is very important. When you read the biography of any companion, okay, they mention this is Badri. What does it mean of Badri? It means he attended the battle of Badr. Okay, what is the significant? Huh? Not first battle. What is the significant that what we mentioned that he attended Badr? Jannah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the sins of people who attended Badr. The Prophet said, Allah said to the people of Badr, do whatever you like, I forgive your sins. So it is not allowed, and it is haram to accuse any companion who attended Badr to say he is a kafir or is why? Because they have a sealed stamp, khalas, stamp from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do whatever you like, khalas, you are forgiven. So that's why it is very important. They mention in the biography of the companions. Shahida Badran, he witnessed the battle of Badr. Khalas, don't touch him. Don't say anything bad about him. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So one of them, Abdullah ibn Rawaha. And also he attended all of the battles? No, not all of the battles, because he, he was a shaheed. In which battle? Mu'ta. Mu'ta, yes. In the eighth year. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, SubhanAllah, in Mu'ta, it was very, very tough, very difficult battle, Ma'araka, very difficult war. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, Zayd ibn Haritha, wa Abdullah ibn Rawaha. These are the leaders, يعني, one after the other. If Ja'far killed the other one, if Zayd ibn Haritha killed the other one, Abdullah ibn Rawaha. And SubhanAllah, all of them killed in this battle. It was tough, very difficult. Then who, who took the leadership of this battle? Khan Walid. Allah The Prophet said, Allah gave him the victory. He came back with the army. But the Prophet called, called this a victory. Why? Because he saved the Muslim army. So this is very important and this is the wisdom. Sometimes you need to regret. Sometimes you need to keep silent. Sometimes you need to يعني, avoid some of the topics in da'wah. Why? For a bigger maslaha, for a bigger benefit. This is very important and this is now many da'i don't understand this. No, I should do this. I have to speak the haq, the truth. I, Habibi, you will lose. You'll not get any benefit. The Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca. Okay, the situation was very difficult. They cannot even very difficult to pray in the Kaaba. They are Muslims and they like to practice the rights of anyone. If you are from any religion, you can, you can enter Mecca and you can do Tawaf, you can do Hajj, you can pray in the Kaaba. I mean, in, in, yes, in the Haram, Masjid Haram. But if you are a Muslim, no, they will fight you, they will stop you, they will kill you. The Prophet ﷺ told them, wait, be patient. It was his way. SubhanAllah, some people don't accept the way of Rasulullah ﷺ. No, I have to say something, I have to defend, I have to fight. And if they kill me, I am shaheed. Habib, please, you have to think. You have to know the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu The point is, khalas, I have to do something, they kill me or I get the victory? No, this is not the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu You have to plan. I have to win. I have to win. As a Muslim, you have to win. You have to plan. Okay, this doesn't mean that, that wallahi, 
uh, I, am, uh, I fear the death. No, it doesn't mean I fear the death, but I want to, to, to see Islam bigger and bigger. The Prophet ﷺ was planning for something more. Like Sul Hudaybiyah. Okay? I, I mean the Hudaybiyah Treaty. At the beginning, the companions did not agree. The Prophet ﷺ wrote something very difficult for, for them to absorb and to accept. Yalla, 10 years, no war, no fighting. This year, no Umrah. It is not allowed for you as Muslim to enter and do tawaf and say. You should go back. Anyone accepts Islam, you have to give us. Anyone from Mecca, escaped from Mecca as a Muslim to Medina, and we ask to submit this man to us, خلاص, you have to give us. Any one of the Muslims who go to Medi to, uh, from Medina to Mecca as a kafir, خلاص, you don't have the right to ask for him. This is dull, this is oppression. The Prophet said, okay, خلاص, I agree. Okay, I'm sure now, maybe most of the Muslim, maybe all the Muslim will not accept. Will not accept. Okay, so the Prophet subhanahu and I mentioned this point many times, the scholars mentioned, during this short period, I mean from the sixth year until the tenth, tenth uh, and the eighth year, how many years? About two years. Okay, and before that, I mean 13 years in Mecca, and about six years in Medina, 19 years. The number of people who accepted Islam in the two years, more than the people who accepted Islam in 19 years. So the point is to fight and to show, Wallah, I am a brave, khalas. Or the point is to deal in wisdom, to plan, to think, okay? You ha you, we have, I mean, as a Muslim, we have to plan. Sometimes we need to keep silent. Sometimes we need, okay, to do some meetings with the kuffar. Because you don't have any other way. We need to study the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa To understand what was the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in dealing with the kuffar situations. So Abdullah ibn, ibn, ibn Rawaha was the, one, of, one of the shu'ara. He was one of the companions who used to, get, to say the shi'r, the poetry in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like Hassan ibn Thabit. طيب, and, and one day, the prof, uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the masjid, and Abdullah ibn Rawaha was saying the shi'r, the, the poetry. Then Umar said, are you saying this in the masjid in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khalli anhu ya Umar. Okay, leave him. Don't stop him. Falahu wa asra'u fihim min nadh nabl. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar, don't stop him. Give him the chance to say the, the poems. Okay, why? Falahu wa asra'u. It is stronger and it makes the shi'r, the poetry makes uh, injuries more than the weapons. Subhanallah, this is what is called the Al Harb al Social media. The social media. Now subhanallah they they they, they lead the Muslim Ummah by the media. By the media. And maybe sometimes we know that the number of Muslims, they use this way. In some countries they mention, like which, which country that day we were talking about, they mention the number of Muslims, 40% uh, and it is 70% you told me, huh? in Africa, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Okay, if you go encyclopedia, okay, no, the number, Muslims are min minority. But the reality, no, they are majority. Why they are doing this? They don't want to give you the chance to ask for your rights. No, we are minority. We are only 10%. We will not ask anything, the government. We, okay. How, 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 how they control the Muslims? By the media. Okay. So be careful. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to the kuffar. You have to search. You have to make sure. 
Don't take the WhatsApp and خلاص والله this information like Quran. It is from WhatsApp, from unknown source. طيب. And also Abdullah Rawaha was one of the strong companions. I mean his buddy. And one hadith, the bro, the bro, in, in, in Ramadan, okay, the, the companions were traveling. And it was very hot, the weather. You know, in Medina, Saudi, it is very hot. It is not cold weather or, yani, uh, I mean, the temperature more than 40, 45. Traveling. So they said, none of us were fasting except Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abdullah bin Rawaha. Only these two people were fasting. And all the, the, uh, and the rest of the companions not fasting. Of course it is not wajib. It is not compulsory to fast in Ramadan if you are traveling. But this hadith shows the, 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 the power of Abdullah bin Rawaha. Radiyallahu ta'ala. So I like to mention some points about Abdullah bin Rawaha because many Muslims don't know who is Abdullah bin Rawaha. رضي الله تعالى عن طيب so the Prophet used to say some of the شعر some of the poetry of Abdullah ibn Rawaha and the Prophet used to say وَيَأْتِيكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّدِي okay the Prophet used to say وَيَأْتِيكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّدِي sometimes that person brings news to you whom you have not compensated what is the meaning of this part of uh, the poem, it means usually people pay money to get the news. Yalla, take 10 KD, 20 KD, okay? And I need to check this uh, information. Okay, maybe sometimes you give your daughter some money to know what, what your wife is doing, sah? Huh? Are you doing this? No, alhamdulillah. Okay, or the opposite. Your wife gives your, your son, huh? What, what, what your father is doing in the halqa? Is he going to the halqa or not? <laughs> sure? Okay. Don't expose our premises. Huh? Don't expose our premises. <laughs> Maybe your wife will ask for another camera. One camera for me, the other camera to show who is attending the halqa. Tayyip? So usually, and sometimes you pay. But sometimes the, somebody will give you the news or the information without paying anything. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Sometimes someone give you the news, the information free, without paying him. From where this poetry? From Tarafa ibn al-Abd. Tarafa ibn al-Abd. Tarafa ibn al-Abd. Okay. Taraf ibn al-Abd, he is one of the famous people in Jahiliyyah, not Muslim, to say the poetry. And there is something called al-mu'allaqat. Do you know al-mu'allaqat? Al-mu'allaqat, these are the famous poetry in Jahiliyyah. Because the Arab world, Mecca, especially Mecca, Quraysh, Okay, they were famous and very strong in saying the poems. Lash'ar. Very strong, very famous. And the best, the best shi'r, the best poems, called al-mu'allaqat. Seven. Or ten. Okay, why they call them al-mu'allaqat? What does it mean mu'allaqat? They say, some, some scholars said mu'allaqat, it means because they used to put these ash'ar on the curtains of the Kaaba. If you go to the Kaaba, they put them on the Kaaba. So anyone visits the Kaaba can read them. Or another meaning, mu'allaqat from the word ulqa, it means valuable, like treasures. Or they hang them like, yani they are valuable like hanging the, the, the bracelet? A necklace. A neck, sorry, necklace. Very nice and very expensive. Okay? And uh, they mention all of them, non-Muslims, except uh, Labid 
Ibn Rabi'a Al-Kulabi. His name will come, inshallah, in the next, uh, in the next hadith. Subhanallah. Uh, next hadith, hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an, hadith number 234. He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the most true words said by a, a poet were the words of Labid. This is the one, Labid ibn Rabi'ah. Labid ibn Rabi'ah, Al-Kulabi. He was not Muslim, alhamdulillah, he accepted Islam. He accepted Islam. Labid ibn Rabi'ah, Al-Kulabi. He said, verily everything except Allah is perishable. Uh, perishable. And Umayyah ibn Abi Salt was about to embrace Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ أَصْدَقَ كَلِمَا قَالَ شَعْرِ It means, usually, those who say the shi'r, the, the poems, usually they lie. But the best word, or the most truthful word, what, what said by Rabi'ah, وَكُلْ مَا خَلَى اللَّهِ أَلَا كُلْ مَا خَلَى اللَّهِ بَاطِلْ Everything except Allah is perishable. And uh, what is the meaning that, as Allah mentioned Surah Al- Al-Qasas, كل شيء هالك إلا وجهه. Everything خلاص will die except Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And this is true. This is true. Me, you, animals, angels, jinn, all of us will die except Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Then he said وكاد أمية ابن أبي الصلت أن يسلم. وكاد Umayyah ibn Abi Salt and Muslim. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Umayyah ibn Abi Salt was about to embrace Islam. Also, this man was one of the people who used to say the shi'r, the poems. Okay? And if you read his poems, you, the, the Prophet gave a comment, يعني, he was very close to Islam, but he did not accept Islam. And the scholars say, when you read his poems, you'll find the tawheed. But he was, he was not a Muslim. Subhanallah. Next hadith, hadith 235 from Jundub, while Rasulullah was walking, a stone hit has a foot. Huh? Yes, it, yes. Uh, a stone hit his foot and he stumbled. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his toe was injured. He then, quoting a, a poetic verse, you are not more than a toe, which has been bathed in blood in Allah's cause. وَمَا أَنْتِ إِلَّا أُصْبَعٍ دَمِيتِ وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مَا لَقِيتِ It means, يعني, okay, يعني, there was no, nothing serious. No cut for this finger, only blood. And this is in the sake of Allah, subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. Uh, why Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, put this hadith here? He wants to tell us, okay, he, uh, he wants to tell us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something. He said something from poems. And Allah in the Quran said, وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهِ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهِ We did not teach him shi'r. We did not teach him poem, uh, poetry. Hmm? Poem. Okay. Now, how we can combine between the verse from the Quran and this hadith? Okay. Different uh, interpretations from the scholars. And one of them, طيب. Uh, uh, one of them, they say, what is mentioned by the Prophet وسلم, very يعني, rare. يعني, how many of poems you, fi- you find in the seer of Rasulullah sallam? When he one day, maybe total three, four. Yeah, now, for example, if I say the shi'r, if I say the, the poems now, can you say Ahmed Rum has Sha'ir if I say one or two? No. If I quote one or two, you cannot say. 
that Ahmed Rum is a shair. Oh. So the same thing, the Prophet ﷺ, he's mentioned one or two times. So the Prophet ﷺ, you cannot say, the Prophet ﷺ, he is shair. No, you cannot. But you say, but he, that day he said once, and the other day twice. One, two, three, four times, or five times in 23 years, nothing. This is one interpretation. Another interpretation, they say, uh, if you study the shi'r, okay, there, there are rules, okay? And when the Prophet ﷺ say, said the shi'r, he did not say the shi'r in the full way. He tries ﷺ to break or to cut part of it. Why? Because he doesn't want to be like the regular shi'r. So the point is, we cannot say, and anyone cannot say the Prophet ﷺ was a shi'r. Okay? But ca did he use the shi'r? Yes. He used it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are the ahadith. Okay. Yes. If if he if he wrote shir? Yeah. He's writing poems on the Islamic matters and mm. then is it is it haram? No shir, okay. The poems we don't say haram or halal. The scholars say shir like the poems like your your talk. If you speak good, then it is good. If you speak bad, then it is bad. And as we mentioned the hadith. Hadith Abdullah ibn Rawah and Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ta'ala stopped him. Or, or he tried to stop Abdullah ibn Rawah. The Prophet said, no, don't stop him. Why? Because he was attacking the kuffar. And also, the same situation, Umar ibn Khattab and Hassan Thabit. Hassan Thabit was in the Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. He was sitting in the masjid or standing in the masjid and was giving the shi'r, saying the poems. Then Umar entered the masjid. He did not stop him. He, he looked at him. Yani Umar was entering and Hassan was the other, other corner. He gave him a... Lahad ilayhi. Abu Jibreel, lahad ilayhi. Yani ata nadra, Like he stared at him. He stared, huh? He stared at, at him. He did not speak. He did not focus on him. Only he gave him his, he stared at him. And Hassan radiallahu ta'ala understood that Umar did not like this. Umar disliked this radiallahu ta'ala. Then Hassan radiallahu ta'ala said, I was giving shi'r, I was saying the poems here, and there was a man who was better than you. He means, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Abu Huraira was in the masjid. He, uh, Hassan said to Abu Huraira, do you witness this? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. I was saying this, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told me, oh Juhum, wa ruhul qudus ma'ak. The Prophet, I was saying the poems in the masjid and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told me and he encouraged me Say the shi'r, ohjum. What does it mean, ohjum? Yani attack them, the kuffar. And Jibreel is supporting you. So if you are saying something good, good meanings about the tawheed, about the Islam, to, to say something, uh, to uh, mention the mistakes of the kuffar, then it's good, alhamdulillah. But if you are talking about, uh, yani, huh? Yeah. Girls, women. Girls, women, huh? Allah al And also the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned hadith uh, and the shi'r in masjid. The Prophet Sallallahu forbade to mention the shi'r in the masjid. But the scholar said the Prophet Sallallahu means the bad uh, kind of poems. You sit in the masjid and talk about camel or cow or sheep or dog or women in the masjid. No, we, we should stop this. If you like to talk about Islam, 
Okay, or some scholars mention the rules of Salah and, or the names of the companions, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in poetry, poems. Then this is okay, good. This is common. Next hadith. Hadith 236 from Bara ibn Azib. Radhi Allah ta'ala an. Sorry, a man said to Al-Bara ibn Azib, رضي الله تعالى عنه, O oh, Abu Amra, Abu Amra is a Bara, uh, sorry, Abu Umara, Al-Bara ibn Azib, his nickname, Abu Umara. O oh, Abu Umara, رضي الله تعالى عنه, uh, did you flee leaving Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم at the day of Hunayn, at the battle of Hunayn? As you know, in the Battle of Hunayn, subhanAllah, what happened? The Kuffar attacked suddenly the Muslims. Then the Muslims ran away. So this man said to Bara ibn Azib, Did you flee away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Did you flee leaving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He replied, No, by Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa did not flee. But the hasty people hurried away and the people of Hawazin threw arrows at them. At that time, Rasulullah was riding his white mule while Abu Sufyan was holding its reins and he was saying, Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith and also al-Abbas. They did not leave Rasulullah uh, surely, I am the prophet. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. Okay, he said in Arabic, "Ana nabiyu la kadib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib." Okay, the first the first part ends with ba, and also the second part ends with ba. "Ana nabiyu la kadib, ana ibn Abdul Muttalib." Okay. So why he mentioned this? I mean, tell me to mention that, to tell us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to, he said something with the, last, with the same end. طيب, it seems that, يعني, nice when you hear this. But again, this is not, he, he is not Sha'ar Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said this only once here, once there, خلاص. The total in his life, 23 years, maybe three, four, five times, that's it. And of course, in this battle, yeah, no time to mention. Uh, maybe you can find this in one of Jum'a Khutbah. I mentioned this. The Prophet ﷺ was brave, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and also Abbas was with him, and Abu Sufyan al Harith, his cousin, with him, and the Prophet. When the companions left, they they ran away. They flee. Okay, they left the Prophet ﷺ. Not all of them. Most of them. The Prophet ﷺ did not give his back to the kuffar. None of the prophets, none of the prophets gave his back to the kuffar. Always they faced the kuffar. And the Prophet ﷺ was trying to, to, to push his mule to attack the kuffar. It was a difficult situation. Then he said to Abbas, his uncle, Ya Abbas, not the Ashab al Samura. Or Abbas called the people of Samura. What is a Samura? A Samura is the name of the tree where the companions gave the pledge to the Prophet ﷺ in the sixth year. Allah is pleased with the companions who gave you the pledge under the tree in Surah Al Fatih. He said, Nadi Ashab al Samura. Oh my uncle, and subhanAllah, his voice strong. Al Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah. Then he said, Ya Ashab al Samura. All the people of the Samura tree. Ya Ashab al Samura. So when they heard Al Abbas calling them, immediately they you turned. They came back to the Prophet وسلم, defending Islam, defending Rasulullah. This is the true Muslim. If you hear any call, you should answer. No need to discussion. No need to think. You have to answer. 
Rasulullah, you have to answer Allah. If there is a call to something will give you life and always Quran and Sunnah give you life. Then subhanallah, Allah supported them and they won the battle. So he said, أنا النبي لا كذب أنا ابن عبد المطلب طيب I should stop here, inshallah Continue next week Zakum Allah khair Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Any question?